Thank you so much, Elizabeth. You know, a lot of talk about Comet since Comet I Sun uh, over the last couple of weeks. Been watching that, and today we're going to learn how to build a comet, a model of a comet. So not the real thing, but pretty close to it. And here with me to do that and help me do that is Jim Greenhouse, Space Science Director over at the New, Muse New Mexico Museum of Natural History and Science. Good morning, Jim. Good morning. Thanks so much for coming in. Believe it or not, we actually have all the ingredients on this table that would actually be or in a comet or something close to a comet. So, okay, so this is like the real deal. This is like the real deal. So we're going to start off with a little okay. bit of water. Actually, mm -hmm. um, if you want to, you've got your gloves on already, yes. and you might want to put those goggles on. I've got okay. glasses on. Okay. And uh, if you want to put a little bit of water in here, okay. Well, that's one thing that's in comets because comets are basically dig. That's enough. Okay. Those are basically big, dirty snowballs in space. Okay. So they're composed of water, and they're also composed of frozen gases, which I have Ooh, in this bag. I'll okay. get that out in a minute. They're dirty snowballs, so they also have dirt, dirt. in them. So if you want to put a little bit of dirt in there, dirt. that'll okay. help. They I'll also have, while you're uh, getting that open, uh -huh. I've also got some ammonia here. Okay. Um, this is a cleaning product. Of course, comets don't have cleaning products in dirt them. Or more? But this is as close, that's about it. That's good. Okay. Uh, this is about as close as I could get to having pure ammonia. Okay. And so ammonia, water, dirt. Also, some alcohol. Alcohol, okay. And this is rubbing alcohol. Comets don't have rubbing alcohol in them, but this is, again, as close as I could get. So you can stir all that around a little okay. bit. Okay. And comets also have organic compounds in them. And I've got some, I brought some salt here this some morning. Salt. Anything that's got okay. carbon in it will work. So okay. you want your comet to taste good, I guess. I don't, <laughs> although I don't want to think we should probably try to eat this. No, probably not. No. Especially so with the dirt. <laughs> for my frozen gases, I've uh -huh. got some uh, dry ice here. Dry ice. So Ooh. we're going to pour a little dry ice in there. That's mainly why we need the gloves because okay. this dry ice is so cold that you could actually uh, freeze your fingers on it. Oh, okay. And I as you, now things are getting exciting. Yes, they are. I feel like I'm in a real science lab right now. And um, the reason we're uh, making a comet is because of, like you mentioned, Comet Ison. Yes. We were hoping would be Comet of the Century, but oh, unfortunately so something happened. So if you get frozen gases and water near like a blast furnace or a really intense fire, what do you think would happen? It's going to It's just going to evaporate, evaporate just like that, just okay. like this. And that's basically what happened to Comet Ison. Now, uh, yeah, the I reason got, when it got close to the sun, right? The reason comets get tails behind them is because the sun actually boils off some of that ice. Uh huh. And let's see if we can make this comet have a little bit of a tail. Ooh. So you see the ice is boiling off. Yeah. And there's I a do. this gas coming gas off. Gas coming would, out. Yeah. Would represent the tail of the comet. Sometimes I can get a nice little jet of this going. There we go. All right. And uh, so that's the tail of the comet. Now there is actually a comet you can see in the sky. If you get away from city lights, it's called right. Comet Lovejoy. Lovejoy, yes. I've seen some pictures of Lovejoy, and, actually. And um, it's, it's really dim, so you do have mm -hmm. to get away from city lights to be able to see it. But now, this is totally different from meteors and meteorites. Right. So, and um, we're getting to that here in just okay. a minute because there's also a meteor shower happening yeah, right now. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, but anyway, if you want to know where to find Lovejoy, go to mm -hmm. the museum's Facebook page. There's a okay. chart on there. Um, and also, there's an article about the Geminid meteor shower. Now, tonight and tomorrow night are the best nights for the Geminid meteor shower. Yeah, we just need to get these clouds that get out of here so you can <laughs> actually take a uh, peek at yeah, it. Yeah, I hope we, I hope they, I hope we can see it because, and that's related to comets because meteor showers are actually the debris are caused by the debris of comets. Right. Because when comets move through space, they actually um, leave in their in their wake, uh, all this tail actually is uh, composed of a bunch of ice and gas and dust and mm -hmm. um, rocks. And whenever those rocks and ice start to, whenever they get close to the earth, they actually burn up in the air up above us. Right. And then we get the shooting and falling stars. Right. Isn't it the, um, the the orbit of the earth passing through kind of like the edge that's of the tail exactly of the comet? That's exactly it, right. right. And that's why and we get those meteor this showers. This one's called the Geminid meteor shower because it comes out of the constellation of Gemini. Oh. And uh, if you don't know where the constellation of Gemini is, we actually have a couple of special events coming up at the museum. Uh, one is actually happening this Saturday, and then there's one next Saturday. Okay. And if you want to know more about those, please visit the museum's website, mm -hmm. and uh, that's nmnaturalhistory.org, right. and uh, you can learn more about that. Now, I think our comet may be just about ready? about ready to go. All right. See how quick and easy this is? This is a fun project you can do with your kids, too, so, or even in the classroom for some and, of the teachers. Um, it takes a little while for the comet to freeze, but freeze let's over. see. Okay, we'll let it let's sit there and got. freeze for a second. Well, let's see what we got. Oh, actually, look at that. Well, it kind of disintegrated like oh, comet like ice on. <laughs> 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 but anyway, I'll pull the debris out, and you can see. And this is, this, what is you get. this is a really good representation of a comet because just like comets, oh. it's pouring out gas. Yeah. And it's uh, composed of, of 
Yep, sure. It's composed of uh, frozen uh, gases, and that's what you see. Uh, yeah. That whenever the gas, uh, whenever a solid turns directly to gas, that's called sublimation. So that's what you see happening there. Right. And uh, and they're a little dirty. Some yes. comments are most comments are actually quite a bit dirtier than this. Probably. Right. We probably so, need to put there a little more dirt on yeah, there. Yeah, probably should have like, put looking some more like dirt a, in. a really good comment. But that's that, really neat. And that dirt is what uh, actually burns up in the sky up above us when we have those meteor showers. Oh, fantastic! Along with ice. I love it. Very good lesson. Thank you so much, You're Jim. welcome. Uh, for teaching us how to do that. And if you are very interested in this or you want to maybe have your kids do this, uh, you could join the Albuquerque Astronomical Society. They're actually having a meeting tomorrow night, right? That's, that's right. Okay. At and the museum. At the museum. Okay, and for a recap on this on how to make a comet, super easy to do and a list of the materials, just go to casa.com and click on the CASA blog. Thank you again. Thank you. All right, do you have a